out to district and county superintendents last <clears throat> last night. Um, and so the important thing when you're talking to schools is they just need to keep operating under those plans that they are submitting to the governor and nothing in this new order yesterday changes what schools are doing. Um, before we jump into another topic, does anyone want to add anything on that or any questions? Chloe, can you unmute everyone? I think everyone is unmuted now. Any any comments or questions about either federal funding or the guidance to schools slash stay at home order yesterday? Has anyone received Kirk, Lance, Dennis? Have you guys received any questions or concerns? Not really. Um, a few okay. a few phone calls, just double checking, but. No real concern. Okay, great. Well, so this I think is, we'll this is Kirk Dillon. Yeah, and I, yep. I just would report out, you know, most of the calls and concerns actually were happening while the governor was making the announcement. And so, okay. <laughs> you know, the rally to get good information out um, right after that happened. Um, it's been relatively quiet since then. Good. I did have one um, superintendent reach out. I, I forget the name of the school now, very rural school. And um, he asked if he could print out my email to give to his teachers in case they get pulled over by the, the sheriffs asking what they're doing. So, <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, say yes? <laughs> yeah, I said he can print out whatever he needs or if he needs something on letterhead, that's fine. Um, <laughs> But um, Ashley, are you on the line? Do you want to run through where we're at with assessment waivers? Yes, I'm on the on the line. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I, I have both the state and the federal update on where we're at with the testing waiver process. Yesterday, the Board of Public Education held the meeting where they voted on waiving the testing requirements for the spring 2020 season. So that includes our five assessments Smarter Balance, ACT with Writing, Multi-State Alternate Assessment, Montana Science Assessment, and the alter Alternate Montana Science Assessment. Also, last or earlier this week, I guess it is, my days are kind of blurring, I'm sure they are for everyone else, on March 24th in partnership with the Office of Commissioner of Higher Education, both OPI and OCHI will allow these what are now 2020 high school juniors to take the ACT at no cost on an alternative timeline. So they'll be allowed to have that this fall semester of their senior year. And those dates that were released are the October 6th, October 20th and November 3rd. For the federal uh, waiver status update, we submitted our intent waiver that we reported out on earlier on March 19th and then officially on March 26th. Yesterday, late, um, later that day, we submitted our one-year waiver uh, using the inter universal U.S. Department of Education form to waive the requirements for assessment, accountability, and reporting uh, under every Student Succeeds Act. So that's a little bit of the, the status waivers. And also, Dylan, I'm happy to also share out on the Smarter Balance interim options for remote kind of learning strategies for educators, if that's appropriate now. Thanks, Ashley. So, uh, sorry, when do you think we'll get word uh, from the department? Do you think they'll get back to us today or probably not till Monday? Um, I, I think I think it is likely that we will uh, hear back from them in one business day as projected with that form. And so if I remember correctly, it was around two or so yesterday. So I think it is hopeful that we'd be able to receive uh, approval status by the end of day today, if, if not at the latest at the end of day on Monday. Great. Well, once you get that, if you just want to send it out to the group um, or if you don't have everyone's email, I can forward it on, but um, we'll send that as soon as we get it. Yes, I can definitely do that for everyone. Thank you. 
Um, let's see. Add any questions. Okay, yeah. So like Cole said, if you have questions that we don't get to or we can't hear you, um, post it in the chat. Uh, Michael, do you want to see your enrollment? Um, <clears throat> Pardon me. Yes, uh, just real quickly, um, a lot of questions have come in about um, enrolling students while uh, during the school closure. We've put information up on our uh, on our uh, COVID website. It's real simple. Yes, please continue to enroll students um, even during the school closure. Um, I think that's the, the uh, short and easy answer to that. Any any questions or any, I, I don't know, Kirk, or uh, are you guys getting any questions about this too? That one hasn't been coming my way. I don't know if others are, but um, I'm sure there's lots of folks thinking about it, but I haven't been getting questions about that, Michael. Kirk, Kirk I did want to let you know, we have had some concerns with um, schools in Missoula and Browning. Um, about how they're enrolling students um, as well as how they're giving students academic credit. Um, so I know Jewel's been working on that. I don't know if she's on the line, but it sounds like some schools are um, having some trouble moving to the proficiency based model um, and ensuring that students are enrolled and that they can keep up with their academic progress by showing proficiency. Um, so I'm sure you're giving out guidance on that, but um, you know, let us know if you hear anything. Oh, Jules on the CT call. Um, Cole, do you want to talk about uh, the hub courses and remote learning? Sure. Um, yeah, just a quick update. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen here for those of you who are online in the meeting too. Um, on the online learning resources page on the OPI website, uh, we have a couple of things just to call to your attention. Uh, press release went out from Montana PBS for um, their schedule of Montana Learn at Home resources. Um, they're changing up their weekday schedule um, to include programming that is appropriate for um, pre-K through high school students. Uh, next week's schedule is set, as well as the second week of programming. I'm going to give them a little bit of input on the third and fourth weeks of programming that they have planned, but uh, that's just something to be aware of. The schedule that's linked here on the online learning resources page is a PDF of the schedule for the coming week. If you're doing packets or if you know of um, those districts that are doing packets, it's a principle that they might be able to add um, or certainly uh, link to their district websites for um, parent information. Um, the other thing too is that we had uh, 977 educators, I believe, um, and school leaders participate in the remote learning sharing sessions that we held this week. And so we created a schedule for uh, week two um, based on uh, overwhelming interest and, and desire to continue those conversations and discussions. So you'll see that um, Instead of 12 sessions in a day, we, we slimmed it down um, and combined some sessions and added a couple of sessions that were topics that came up um, most frequently. So that ske um, schedule is here, as well as the notes from all of the sessions that were held in week one of these remote learning sharing sessions. So as you look at this document um, and just click on the sharing session notes, we um, have links to resources, great tips and ideas. Uh, just for an example, I'll pick on one of these. Um, uh, and we organized information from um, kind of that range of no tech, low tech, high tech, and specific things that came up about supporting parents um, as we're developing and implementing remote learning plans. So that's kind of the rundown of um, Montana PBS, the remote learning sharing sessions. Um, and then, you know, there's a, a lot of information, um, some of which we're gleaning out of these sessions and then adding to uh, links and, and resources uh, specifically for educators. Um, there's a lot of conversation and interest around um, how we treat 
web-based uh, video calls and, and meetings with students. And so we're adding some of that information in online privacy information, things like Zoom's ter terms of use for uh, use in schools, um, as well as those internet services, um, service providers and telcos who are offering assistance for or deals for accessing the internet. Um, we're really excited to have Linda Rost, who's on the call with us today, um, and Dylan Huskin, our Teachers of the Year, to put together a really nice uh, remote learning overview video that would be great to share with leaders and with teachers. Um, and then we're trying to have just short lists of um, go-to resources uh, in a variety of topic or content areas that we're updating and adding to as the week goes on. Um, the only other thing that I would add is that we do have on the Teacher Learning Hub, the, um, let's see here, uh, got too many tabs open, sorry. Um, I'll just stick with this. The um, Hub online learning course that we opened up last week has about 100 educators taking that course. And, so um, that's just another thing that, that we put together. So if um, districts are using or have a learning management system, uh, it sounds like a lot of schools are using Google Classroom as a, a platform for um, elementary through high school learning. So the course is designed to think about what does um, good learning look like in an online environment um, in a kind of platform agnostic way. So um, it's, it's a set up too so that if somebody wants to do just a quick one hour overview, they can do that or there's a three hour session um, version of it as well that they want to dig a little bit deeper, um, they, they can do that as well. So that's what I have um, for everybody. Uh, we're sending out uh, a message with information about the remote learning um, sharing sessions, the PBS learning um, at learning at home resources, and uh, just don't hesitate. Reach out if you've got information to add or just want to visit. Um, shoot me an email, and I'd be happy to visit with you. That's what I got. Thanks, Kalei. Uh, any questions for Kalei? Um, I just want to, yeah, I want to thank Kalei. Uh, her team has been fantastic in getting information online for educators. Um, I, like I said on, on Twitter this morning, um, you know, not to brag, but I think the education community has responded uh, to this situation better, better than most industries. Um, and that's, that's because we're all working together and getting information out. Um, and the local schools are doing amazing things. Um, so thanks, Kalei and everyone else who's, assisted in getting information out. Um, is there, I don't have anything else on the agenda, but is, are there any other updates or anything else for the good of the order? Hey Dylan, this is McCall. I just want to give a quick update on where we're at with plans. Um, I've received Thanks, about McCall. 245 plans that I've been able to at least log and I do have a full mailbox at this time. Um, as you can imagine, there's about 400 or so plans um, so we have quite a ways to go. Um, I am going to be taking those over the weekend. And of course, if folks get them to me Monday, um, that's okay as well. My goal is um, by the end of today, by five o'clock, is to email a list of plans or at least school districts that I don't have plans for to both OPI and our education partners. And if we can divide and conquer to reach out to each of these folks to make sure that they get me something I don't want anyone to have to make up school. I know the governor doesn't either. And I think that'd be a really tough situation for some of these schools to be in. If for some reason I didn't see it or maybe they sent it to the wrong email, I just wanna make sure that we're doing everything we can to get everyone um, uh, everyone at least an opportunity to, for, to get me a plan. So if folks have any questions on that, I'm happy to answer them. I'll be around all weekend as well. Um, probably just sitting at my computer logging these plans. So um, just let me know. And another really good point is um, every plan that I've received is approved for a waiver. So not one plan have I um, denied. And if, if they're missing something, I've just asked them for it and they've provided it to me. So if they just get me a plan, there's a good uh, probability that it's going to be approved. 
Thanks, McCall. Um, appreciate that update. Um, does anyone have any questions for McCall? Um, or any other, anything else? Uh, McCall, do you know um, if before five o'clock today the governor's office is going to be doing anything new? <laughs> It's funny because I am not sure. Being away from the office, I don't really get like the buzz of what's happening. So to be honest, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so McCall, this this is Kirk, and I'm sorry I missed the number that had been turned in to you at this point. What are you estimating? Yep. So um, I have about 245 right now, um, and like I said, I do have about 25 or so emails still to go through. Um, but that's still a pretty good chunk that I don't have. Yeah, and so there were a lot of board meetings that were happening yesterday and some that are happening today. And so, you know, they're waiting until they their boards have approved. So you're probably gonna get a huge chunk. <laughs> what, I, what I'm saying yeah, is that no I'm aware of, of many, you know, that had board meetings either oh, yesterday or they're having them today. And so as soon as they get approval of the board, you'll that email will be coming. And, We've, we've been, you know, promoting on our, all of our correspondence too, that this is the deadline. And I know all of the other edu education partners have been doing that as well. Awesome. Thank you. And, um, and as you can imagine too, sometimes uh, some districts are sending them in. I know Denise had this question. Some districts are sending um, high school and elementary districts together. Some are K-12. Um, so really just making sure that I'm covering my spaces as well and didn't just miss one because they're separate districts and I didn't realize that they should be logged together. So really this is to double check myself as well. That's Thanks awesome. McCall. Um, and we do appreciate the governor, um, you know, earlier this week announcing what he was doing uh, with schools. He made um, a comment in his press conference that he'd heard from the education community that they wanted to know uh, sooner rather than later. So if you can just let your office know that we are thankful he made that decision as soon as possible and any future decisions um, that he can make as soon as possible, we, we certainly appreciate. Great, thanks. Yep. So McCall, this is Kirk again. And I just a question about <clears throat> um, uh, the request that was made earlier on Wednesday, I guess, which is only two days ago, but seems like a long time ago about the waiver of transportation as well as 20-7-1326 uh, related to technology platforms and complying with the new House Bill 745 at just delaying that time. Do you know the status of that in front of the governor and is that possibly considered, gonna be considered here? Got lots of districts asking I questions about that. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand. And I do know that everyone was hand, you know, all hands on deck for the um, stay at home order from yesterday. So I can check back in with race today and see if they've made any progress and at least just let you know um, where they are at with that. that. That would be great. Thanks. Um, anything else we didn't hit on or Anything that anyone wants to bring up? So this is Kirk again, I'll just report out on the survey. Uh, that mechanism went out on Wednesday morning. And so we're two days in at 7.30 this morning, there were 91 uh, surveys that have been completed by superintendents and or county superintendents. Um, and so that return rates about 32% at this point and they have till April, our schools have till April 3rd to get that done. And <clears throat> you know what, what's coming in is exactly kind of what you've described, Dylan, is that we're seeing just a huge rally of, of our schools and great education teams that are doing their very, very best to, to implement offsite learning. So um, that's a good, good get and we'll, we'll have that complete information by Friday of next week. That's great. Well, anything else uh, for the good of the order? All right, well, hopefully everyone has uh, a good weekend and is able to relax, I guess, in, in the home or out on our trails, <laughs> since that's about all we can do. Um,
But we'll touch base out. Christy, do we have another one of these scheduled on Monday or Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday at 1030, I guess. Um, as long as nothing changes, I guess we'll talk to you all um, on Tuesday at 1030. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.